extraordinary film. Peter Sellers is a simpleton who all of his life has worked as a gardener in the Washington home of some rich guy who we never see. And um, he, 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 he discovers one morning that his employer has died and he doesn't seem to actually understand quite what that means and it doesn't seem to trouble him much. And then the attorneys come in and they say, well, you're going to have to leave now. He doesn't quite understand what that means, except that he's, he's dressed himself up in a suit of his former um, um, employer's clothes and just goes out into the streets in Washington. And he, he's, he loves TV. He loves TV. And he takes with him into the streets of Washington the remote control from the TV. When he's confronted with some um, uh, hostile young men, he flips the thing at them, thinking that will make them go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the sort of chance circumstance, he, he ends up in the house of Ben Rand, who's a uh, plutocrat who's dying. And, um, and uh, <laughs> they, they think his name is not Chance, the gardener. They think his name is Chauncey Gardener. Uh, and um, he, they ask his opinion about various things and he replies as best he can speaking about gardening because that's all he knows and they take that as metaphorical and he ends up greatly impressing the President of the United States <laughs> <laughs> who is a friend of Ben Rand and this is why it's such great irony because all along you know he's just a simpleton who's a gardener and they're all reading much much greater meaning into everything he does and says they, they check his clothes see, secretly and discover that they were tailored in the 1930s by a tailor who's since gone out of business and his business has burnt down and all this and that. And he hasn't got any credit cards, he hasn't got anything. <laughs> and so they think immediately he must be so important that either the CIA or the FBI have deleted his record. <laughs> and by virtue of having no record, he becomes super important. I mean, so in itself it's a great comment on the way American society is. Yeah. And I had completely forgotten that ending. And it really knocked me over when I saw it. I thought, wow. Because you guys certainly think, how the hell can they end this? I mean, you've got the simpleton who's sort of suddenly you know, sort of risen without a trace. And you wonder where it can go. Yeah. And it, it, it really tickled me to think that a simpleton could talk his way into the White House that way. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He is a, really a palimpsest. He, he's, anything you want to read into him is available. Mm. It's an extraordinary role. I mean, I, and of course, there's one wonderful scene early on where he's walking up whatever it is that main strip in Washington, you know, with the Cleopatra's needle at one end and the Lincoln Memorial, and he's walking along it like this, wearing a, a bowler hat and looking just like the Magritte painting. Mm. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of lot of very clever references like that.